Hey guys, Achi Luxury on the Achi Luxury channel, Paul Pluto channel. Hey guys, I'm making this video. Why Rolex hates me? Why does Rolex hate me? Very good question. Very good question. I mean, Rolex themselves, they don't need me. They don't need me. Um, they are a brand which is beyond belief. You mention wristwatches and uh, you mention Rolex. Rolex, Rolex. It's a bit like Ferrari, Mercedes Benz. It's just it, it, BMW. It's a just a cornerstone brand name. Rolex, Rolex. You don't need to explain. It's just, it's a luxury Swiss timepiece. Famous for its ruggedness, etc., etc. They don't need me. They don't need me. And to be honest with you, you've got to understand why does Rolex hate me? Well, there's a number of reasons why. I'm going to tell you why they hate me. Number one, they believe that they should control all. They believe they should control all output. They don't want independent three free thought out there. They're Swiss. They're Swiss. That's correct. They are Swiss. And they don't want somebody bagging the dealer network. They don't want someone who says buy used, pre-owned and talks about flipping and all sorts of these sort of topics there. They would like to have information that comes out that they control. So Rolex are a bunch of control freaks. That's right. They like to control the output. With Archie Luxury, they got no control. So that's the, the first reason they hate me. The second reason is, the second reason is, is that I'm not PC. See, they want statements, press releases. They got to do things in a P politically correct way. You know, go to your our ADs. They want the dealer network to be strong. See, I never bought new. I always bought used. They really dislike that. So... I'm not PC. I don't, I don't, you know, give them the spin that they want. They don't get the spin and the feelings of love that they, they want from Mr. Chesterfield. The, uh, the third reason they hate me is that I've been very critical of the dealer network. I've always said the dealers are a bunch of Dealers are a bunch of, you know what I mean, the dealers are a bunch of, and you know, they, they don't like that, they want to go through the dealer network, that's right, they want to go through the dealer network, they don't want someone saying, hey, our dealers are a bunch of, you know, that that's not what they want to hear, they want toadies who agree with everything that PR corporate corporate releases and that's what they want they don't want someone who says think independently and um, you know that's that's what that's what that's how they feel the uh, the fourth reason they hate my guts is because let's face it Rolex is very much like Ferrari they are angry they are angry that the collectible market exists. They are very angry that somebody could make money out of vintage product from them. It's a bit like Ferrari. Ferrari apparently is furious that people would buy their old cars and they're worth so much. And they're not getting a slice of the action. They're not getting a slice of the pie. And I'm a bit like that as well because they, um, you know, they that's their name, it's their history, and they're not getting a share of it? That's not fair. That's right, we're corporates. They, uh, they, uh, they very much 
they very much uh, think that they're in their entitlement they're entitled to make moolah out of everything they've done and have done and did and are doing they think they're entitled so somebody can make money out of vintage what what about us what about us yes exactly right there uh and I gotta tell you another reason, the fifth reason that Rolex hates my guts is because I have called them out. They've had many times that vintage pieces have gone in and they have absolutely killed the value. They've changed hands, they've changed dials, they've changed parts, they've put on service parts. They have completely destroyed beautiful vintage watches by replacing parts and do they give you your parts back no way in the world they keep those parts one particular case i've got a friend of mine who bought a berthier 5513 submariner no date plastic beautiful patina dial with hands and it had an original bracelet. Guess what? He said, oh, the bracelet's a bit rough. What can you do? Oh, we can replace it, sir. Oh, the dial needs replacing the hand. All of a sudden, instead of it being a $25,000, 20 to $25,000 vintage 5513, it's become a $10,000 pizza, pizza, a pizza, a pizza. Because they replaced the bracelet, replaced the the dial, replace the hand, it's completely rejigged. Now, Rolex's argument is that, well, it meets the standards. The waterproofing would still be, the integrity would be good, and this and that. But as far as the collectability goes, they shot it in the foot. They shot it down. It's no longer an original. By 513, it's, it's, it's got a service dial. It's got service hands. Server, it's got a replacement bracelet. Those old bracelets are worth a fortune. And this is, and the sad thing is, is the owner, he foolishly thought, ah, oh, go to Rolex. You can't go wrong getting it overhauled by Rolex themselves. Where, what better place to go to? But no, see, Rolex isn't geared to the collectible market. They're geared to. The new market, it's like bringing a vintage Mercedes-Benz to a Mercedes-Benz dealer. You bring in a, a Goldwing Mercedes, probably probably all the mechanics and, and uh, service staff have never seen one, yet alone worked on one. And that's the same thing. You, you've got to realize this. It's, it's, it's a glorious past, but if you're not careful, you trust your product to the brand they can really fight you up really really fight the value and it's it's sad to destroy history like that and i gotta tell you the uh, the other reason that rolex hates me is that i am a commercial toady see i will call bullshit out i'll tell you what's happening i'll tell you that ADs are slippery, slippery. They're doing packaging and they are sneaking things out the door. I'd tell you this, I'd tell you. But Rolex doesn't want to hear that in the community. They want to hear PC, be PC. You gotta be PC. And I've gotta say, hey, I never really, I've always sort of just spoken my own words. I have spoken my own words and for good and for bad it's um i gotta tell you man this is the reality that is archie luxury i tell you what i think i don't care about the consequences or or you know i don't get i don't even get dealer invites i don't get dealer invites because i buy most of my stuff pre-owned on the used market i never been a dealer toady I could never play those games. So I've got to tell you, I've got to tell you, it is absolutely terrible. It is absolutely terrible. It is absolutely atrocious. I should be hailed a hero. 
I should be given a complimentary panda from Rolex, but I get nothing. Absolutely nothing. They refuse to acknowledge me, even though I've made them a lot of moolah. A lot of moolah. A lot of moolah I've made for them, and I get not a brass razoo. Not a brass razoo out of it. So this is the reality. Okay, guys. Tell me what you think. Put some comments down below. I'm Archie Luxury, and if you're from Rolex head office, give me a panda! Give me a panda. Okay, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Rolex! Hi, guys. Archie Luxury, and who do I recommend in America? In America, who do I recommend for quality pre-owned wristwatches? David SW, David SW, David SW. Go to davidsw.com. He is the best, the greatest pre-owned dealer in all of the United States of America. David SW, David SW, David SW. Hey guys, Archie Luxury. Who do I recommend for watches in Brisbane and Sydney? Vintage Watch Co. That's correct. Vintage Watch Co. in Brisbane Arcade in Brisbane and the Strand Arcade in Sydney. Vintage Watch Co. Brisbane and Sydney. Ronnie, I've known him since the late 90s. Ronnie is a top bloke. Luke is a great guy. Vintage Watch Co. That is who I recommend in Australia. Check out Vintage Watch Co. and the guys. Amazing range of watches. They also do service and repairs. Vintage Watch Co. That is where the pontiff goes. You know, some of my paddocks came from Vintage Watch Co. That's right, guys. Vintage Watch Co. Only the best for Archie Luxury. Well, I mean, you must admit that looks amazing. You know that. <laughs> Of course, cafe. it's free. There's no cafe. There's no calories in it. You know. You must have been. I'm sorry. When you when I saw the waffles, I, I, I'm sorry. I'm just not a very you know. The waffles it tastes better than it looks. You know. Yeah. So this is you know what? It tastes better than it looks, you know that? <laughs> Even better, mate. I'll give you that. But it's a nice stuff. <laughs> and like you said, no calories. No calories in the brain. <laughs> so you could have had sugar soft drink. You did, he had Fanta. No, you. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to push it. What do you do? Do you go to Lexus after this and get another cake? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Do you and Dave do that as well? Get all the free food and all that? Uh, occasionally. They don't normally have it. We don't normally stay around that long. Yeah. So this is what the poorer middle class do. This one here? No, what I mean is we hang around and get the food. Mm. <laughs> That was delicious. It looked, it, looked, it was better than it looked. You know that it was actually it just. You think it would be amazing? It was actually better.